Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is on pulmonary lecture number 16, thoracentesis from pulmonary camp. From nursing camp from this sticky note found on nursingcamp.com, Pinterest, uh, social media, and nursing camp. So let's get into it. All right, so a thoracentesis, what is it? Well, it's definitely an invasive procedure that you basically are looking at a patient who has... Um, might have pleural effusions in the pleural layers. And what you're doing is, is that with, with the lungs, you have a pleural space. And around that pleural space, sometimes it starts to increase the fluid. And you get what's called pleural effusions. Well, these pleural effusions um, are problematic. They're problematic because the fluid starts to accumulate in this pleural space. And, and that can be caused from a lot of different reasons. It could either be CHF, uh, inflammation, like an infection, cancer, um, empyema, or pneumonia. And the principle is this, that when you have um, basic blood flow, and the alveoli, and what you're having is is that this blood flow is going through. So you have um, venous and then arterial, and the blood flow basically goes around. Now, when you have some sort of blockage in this area, what happens is is that like this could either be a cancer, pneumonia, you actually start to get a buildup of pressure over on this area. Now blood is separated into you know plasma and uh, formed elements. Well this plasma fluid is generally about 55 percent. Well when when there is a buildup of this pressure that fluid has to go somewhere and that 55 percent fluid ends up increasing and that means that with the lungs it starts to seep out. And that's where you get a pleural effusion from. Now, when you're looking at a thoracentesis, it's addressing that pleural effusion or that decompensation. And what we do is, is that we position the patient in a tripod position. Those are those arms. And what you're going to do is, is that um, you're going to get a consent. You're going to get an x-ray before. So an x-ray is important because you need to isolate where the problem is and where you're going to go in with the needle aspiration. And then you're going to basically have that person lean over and then they're going to insert a needle. And that needle is going to withdraw that effusion or withdraw that fluid. Or it's going to biopsy the fluid or send it to the lab to be evaluated. Okay, and what it's going to do is, is that Give us a clearer picture of what's going on in the underlying cause, the cause of the uh, patient's symptoms. And it's like a bronchoscopy, but this is more invasive, right? So a bronchoscopy is invasive. It's a, it's, a, it's a tube that goes down the person's throat. It visualizes the inside of the tree where this is going to visual uh, evaluate the fluid portion or to prevent or to treat some of the fluid. Okay, so let's talk about some, uh, let's talk about the ALEAPS. So the ALEAPS is a method that I use in order to evaluate procedures and um, cover all the areas to, uh, to, um, to evaluate. All right, so the first thing, is it acute? The A, is it acute or is it chronic? Well, it's a definitely a chronic, uh, an acute condition, not chronic. It's done in an acute situations and it's also done to, um, it's invasive, so it makes it acute. Um, what is it looking for? Well, like I said, it's looking for, uh, what's the reason for this increased uh, fluid around the lungs? It's evaluating. It's evaluating for cancer, pathogens, uh, CHF if it's, if it's fluid, empyema or pneumonia and why we're getting these pleural fusions. We need to decrease this amount of fluid so that the person can breathe better. 
Um, what are some labs? Well, think about this. There's, there's a needle going into the body. All right, so it's definitely invasive. And so some of the labs we're definitely going to look at is going to be coax. So you'll monitor their PT, PTT, I and R. You'll definitely check their uh, platelets, his clotting, and their hemoglobin and hematocrit. All right, to evaluate clotting factors um, before. Can they eat or drink? Well, that doesn't really matter for this. It is invasive in this procedure, so it's more localized. Um, what's the assessment before? Like I said, chest x-ray, consent, an understanding of what's going on. You're going to get baseline vital signs. Uh, during the assessment, uh, you're going to assess vital signs because they're going to be uh, having localized pain. You're going to definitely be looking for O2 sets and changes in because the risk here is a potential for problems um, like a pneumo or a hemo so post what do we do well post they're going to have a dressing on them and you're not supposed to you're supposed to keep the dressing in place for one hour so no no showers they should be uh, lying on the unaffected side so if you put the needle in on this side um, you will be laying them on the unaffected side. So the affected side, you'll be monitoring that for bleeding. You'll monitor the drainage. You will, there'll be bed rest for at least one hour post. And you'll be monitoring for um, pneumos and hemothorax. So shortness of breath are always a cue. Um, generally, they'll do a chest x-ray afterwards as well. And sometimes you do see a bump in the uh, white count post because of inflammation. But generally, because infection generally will take greater than 72 hours, um, less than 24 hours you might see, or 24 hours to 48, you might see an increase of the WBC's inflammation. All right, so some prescriptions. Um, you generally hold uh, blood thinners because of uh, risk for bleeding. Um, but follow agency policy for that. Um, so Coumadin, Heparin, um, Eliquis, Pradoxa, Clopidogrel, all bleeding medications um, generally will hold prior to. And follow policy post. Generally, immediately afterwards, one hour post, you definitely do not, but follow policy. What's some definite problems with this? Well, because you are puncturing the pleural space um, in the lungs, on the outside of the lungs, the risk is, is a, a pneumo. That the patient has increased shortness of breath um, or they get a hemo from bleeding. So you're definitely monitoring for that, bleeding, shortness of breath. Um, tracheal deviation is always acute and it's it's a late sign. So what stands out about thoracentesis? Well, it's an, definitely an invasive procedure that um, sticks a needle basically in their back in order to assess positioning is important. Also monitoring for pneumos, hemos, post. Also blood thinners, um, holding blood thinners prior to. Uh, generally monitoring coags and labs. Um, with this procedure. Also, um, not so much for the as assessment of it as far as why they're getting it. It's generally post-procedural. Uh, uh, post we really start to worry about. And um, because the risk is, is that a patient could end up on the floor post-thoracentesis, then you might have to take care of that patient. And pneumos and hemos and getting ready for a potential chest tube um, would be important. All right, that's about it. That's a general overview of uh, thoracentesis. And my name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp. And you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. Um, that's a social media, nursingcamp.com. We'll see you next time.